My name's Tina, and I wanted to start a series about autoimmune diseases, what life is like with them, what they are, to give some information to people who have them, who have loved ones who have them. We're just kind of curious about what are these strange things that they talk about on weird medical shows. Most people's experiences with autoimmune diseases start and end with Dr. House saying it's never lupus except for the one time where it was. But oftentimes it is lupus or something like it. Autoimmune diseases include rheumatoid arthritis, Schroden syndrome, psoriatic arthritis. There are many and more. Hashimoto's disease is an autoimmune disease that affects the thyroid and also often causes hypothyroidism. But most people don't even know what it is or that it exists. Some people's doctors only tell them that they have hypothyroidism and they never know that they actually have an autoimmune disease. Type 1 diabetes is also an autoimmune disease. But in our world, we don't really learn about them. And a lot of people who are diagnosed with them are scared because they don't know. What am I getting into? What's happening to me? And their doctors aren't really good at explaining it. Primary care doctors often don't really have a good understanding of these diseases, and rheumatologists and other experts, specialists, seem to think that we know everything about them. I'm an RN, and during my time in nursing school and while I was working with patients, I spent a lot of time talking to specialists, to other nurses and instructors, and to patients about autoimmune diseases, primarily the ones I have which are lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. I really wanted to understand what was happening to me, but more importantly, I wanted to be able to help other people to understand what was happening to them. I wanted to know what their questions were, what their concerns were, what were their doctors explaining to them? Did they understand their medications and where they came from? How to take them and why? And the answer was overwhelmingly no. They didn't understand, they didn't know, and they were doing things that were dangerous to themselves and giving advice to others that was also dangerous because of their lack of knowledge. My goal here is to provide knowledge, to answer questions, and to put a face to these awful diseases that can completely overtake your life. A lot of people do see on TV that there are these advertisements for medications like Embril and Humira. These are called biologic modifiers. These are kind of the first and foremost thing that most people who don't have these diseases besides Dr. House is referenced. That's what they know about them. And they see people who look normal, who act normal, who are saying that they got their life back with these medications. And some people do. But for most of us, it's really just a matter of getting these medic these using a medication to get these diseases enough under control that we can perform activities of daily living, maybe even work. I'll start with my personal experience and my personal uh, diseases and my treatments today to begin this series. I was diagnosed with lupus at age 20, and I was told that I had probably had lupus for several years before that. Getting a diagnosis was extremely difficult, involved many doctors, several out of the world bizarre diagnoses being told that I was too young, that things were in my head, that I needed to lose weight and everything would get better. I've heard everything and I was very lucky to find a rheumatologist who was associated with Columbia Presbyterian Hospital in New York City who works in my home state of New Jersey who was able to finally give me a diagnosis and to make me feel like everything that was happening was real, that I wasn't crazy, that it wasn't in my head, that it wasn't just me being lazy, that it was just me being fat, that it was just any number of things that I had heard. My first experience with the diagnostic process began when I lived in Virginia and I was having a lot of trouble with joint pain, musculoskeletal pain, fatigue, weird rashes, and very odd symptoms that didn't make sense. 
My primary care doctor was very knowledgeable, and I was very lucky that I found him. He decided to run an autoimmune panel because he felt that an autoimmune disease was very likely. The test that came back positive showed to him that I most likely had lupus. But he said that as a primary care doctor and not as a specialist, a rheumatologist, he didn't feel that he was able to confirm that diagnosis. So he sent me to a rheumatologist. The rheumatologist I saw told me that I was too young to have lupus and that he was going to call it fibromyalgia for lack of anything better to do or to call it. So I was given Lyrica and sent home. Lyrica didn't really help with any of my symptoms, caused me to gain a lot of weight, and generally seemed useless. So I went back to the rheumatologist, told him I wasn't, it wasn't helping, I wasn't going to take it, and he said, if you won't do that, I can't help you. Several, several years later, I moved to New Jersey, and I began to see a doctor to help me deal with the musculoskeletal pain and the other symptoms I had. She was a physiatrist, which is a doctor that kind of deals with the full body, the musculoskeletal system, and I went into her office one day, and my hands were so swollen that I couldn't even wrap my fingers around the steering wheel. I had a fever, I was exhausted, and I was just clearly, clearly out beyond words for pain, for exhaustion, I was barely able to function. She called a rheumatologist friend of hers and said that she thought I needed to be seen immediately that day. So the rheumatologist said for me to come straight to her office and she would find a way to fit me in. After waiting in her office for three hours, because she was very busy, she brought me in and sat me down and she held my hands in her hand and said, there's clearly something going on here and we're going to find it. And I explained to her the history of my prior rheumatological visit and the di original diagnosis I had gotten from my primary care doctor. She took more blood work than I have ever had done in my life, and I worked as a phlebotomist in a hospital. I've seen a lot of blood work done. I've never seen this much blood work done. There were 25 tubes that were taken, and she said, well come back in a week and we'll look over your results and see what's going on. When I came back, she said, well, the good news is it's not in your head and there's definitely something wrong and it's definitely autoimmune. It looks like you have lupus based on your blood work and your symptoms. She said that lupus can't be diagnosed by blood work alone. There's a criteria of symptoms that one must also meet because so many autoimmune diseases share similar blood work patterns. So I had a positive ANA or anti-nuclear antibody, which is positive in almost any autoimmune disease. It basically shows that the body is making antibodies against itself. And I'll explain a bit more about that later. I also showed, tested positive for autoimmune hepatitis, which meant that my immune system was attacking my liver. Now, it doesn't mean that I have hepatitis a viral hepatitis like A, B, or C. It's not communicable, it's not contagious, it just means that my immune system is attacking my liver. She started me on a medication called Plaquenil. Plaquenil is a started life as a malaria medication and was found to help patients with lupus. There were very few side effects and within a couple of weeks I noticed a drastic difference in my pain levels, in my inflammation levels, in my day-to-day -day life was much easier. So I thought, great, we found a medication. I have lupus, but that's okay because it's under control. And I figured that that was about the beginning and end of it. That was the worst that it was going to get. I was very, very wrong. But I did have several years of a wonderful quality of life with Plaquenil, knowing that I just had to be careful about certain things. And then <clears throat> I had a very awful personal tragedy. My brother passed away 
very suddenly, and it was heart-wrenching to say the least. And a couple of weeks after that, my entire body seemed to fall apart. I couldn't walk. I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't get to the bathroom by myself. I was once again at the point where all of my joints were so swollen that I couldn't use them. I was sleeping for 18 to 20 hours a day and still feeling exhausted. I went back to the rheumatologist and she ran a million more tests again. And she said that based on, again, the symptoms and the blood work, I also now had rheumatoid arthritis. Now I've known people who have had both autoimmune diseases. One of my very good friend's mothers had juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, and she also had lupus diagnosed at a very young age. She is one of the feistiest, wonderful women I have ever met, but she also had profound physical difficulties, and I knew that my life would never be the same, that my lupus was very active, that organs were starting to become involved, that my joints were now also involved and that joint damage would begin, and once it starts, there's no way to reverse it. I was given a medication called Imuran, which is an immunosuppressive medication. It stops the immune system from working as well as it normally would, and it's started life as a medication given to people who had kidney transplants. It's an anti-rejection medication. It suppresses the immune system and stops it from attacking the body, specifically the kidneys. Now, for patients with lupus, kidney damage is very, very common to the point where many lupus patients need kidney transplants. So patients were getting kidney transplants and they were given this medication, Imuran, to prevent rejection. And as they're taking this medication after their transplants, they were suddenly feeling much better. Some of them were going into full remission. And so doctors realized that they had a new viable medication to give to lupus patients to help with their symptoms and to potentially put them into remission. After a while on Imuran, I, it, we found it wasn't working as well as we had hoped. So in addition to Imuran, I began a medication called Arencia. Arencia is what's called a biologic modifier. It's one of those medications that you see on TV. It's in the same drug class as Embril and Chimera. And it's a great medication, but and it, it can be given at home subcutaneously. I gave myself an injection in my abdomen once a week, and after six months, it was like I had nothing wrong with me. It was the most incredible transformation. I had gone from being home and barely able to move to suddenly being able to do everything. In that meantime, I had also been put on a steroid called prednisone. Prednisone is a whole other can of worms that I'll talk more about later. But after about six months of feeling great and being in full remission, the Arencia stopped working and I was back to where I had been. And at that point, I became very depressed because I had been exposed to this whole new life, this, this normal life, and I suddenly didn't have that available to me anymore. So after dealing with this depression and talking to my doctor, trying to decide what the next step was, she told me that the next medication would, that would work for me would be called Rituxan, which is a chemotherapy medication. Let me tell you, there's not much scarier than being told, chemo is your best bet. Here you go. It's going to make you feel all kinds of better, you know, after you're done feeling like crap. It's not as scary as it sounds. You don't get the same dosage that you would if you had cancer, and it's not one of the strongest chemos, but it does still have some pretty annoying, more than annoying side effects. So I did a rituxan infusion, which is also very difficult, was difficult for me to get because it is $10,000 per infusion, 
so my insurance company wasn't really all about paying for that. But my doctor is wonderful, and her staff is wonderful, and they bothered the insurance company and pestered them until they approved it, and I got that infusion. Now, the first in two infusions didn't help very much. They did help, but not as much as I would have hoped. And you can only get the infusions every four to six months. So now I will be getting another infusion um, on Monday of next week, which will be the first of two. And I'm very much hoping that with these infusions, I will be able to go into remission for both the lupus and the rheumatoid arthritis, and that I will be able to get some of my life back under control.